viewers, you are welcome to Living Legends in Memory of the Divine Drama, Kofi Ganaba. <laughs> Ganaba is a musician. The unique thing about Ganaba is that he is the first, he's the first son of a bitch to play from drums with his hands and his feet in the in, 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 in Ghanaian music history. You know. So that uh, somebody says Somebody says about my place is a place with more hands and feet than more than, than ordinary mortals are endowed with. <laughs> Dr. Kujo. He says Ghana Bap Gawarian place with more hands and feet than ordinary mortals are endowed with. Yeah. I'm the octopus. When I play drums I become like an octopus. Uh, briefly, how would you like to describe Kofi Ganaba, who has been so close to you and uh, a childhood friend? But Kofi was my very good friend in our infancy. But as we grew up, I attended Accra Academy. He went to Achimata for training as uh, a teacher. But halfway he left and joined the late Ajo Kansi's uh, press, city press. He left and went to Liberia as a disc jockey. His father, the late illustrious Richard Akwe, had him re repatriated. But because he was adventurous, he went back to Liberia. And from there, he went to America. And uh, started um, his young um, interest in music. He was a drummer at school, a very good drummer, and he joined Tempos, the first Tempos. It's there that is liking for music blossomed. <clears throat> at Achimota, when he was there, he could entertain the whole school on Friday evenings. And uh, you would think, because of his antics, that um, he, was, he wasn't interested in education. But he, he was an intelligent chap, very, very intelligent and very smart. Billy Eckstein, uh, an Afro-American singer, trumpeter, trumpeter and musician, band leader. Uh, in my youth, we were look-alikes. And this article said that the next time used to entertain at uh, Howard University, I think he, it was. And he would sing and people would go gaga over him and all that. And so he, he came to believe that his voice was his fortune, and that's what he should do, sing. So he, he left college, didn't even finish it, and went to the music field, and he became famous and great, one of the greatest Afro-American musicians uh, uh, of uh, my lifetime, or of, of, the, of the millennium. Now, when I was at Ashimoto, we, we would have uh, entertainment nights. And I would tap dance and sing and play drums and carry on and turn the whole college upside down. You know, masters and students alike 
Well done, hey, who ha, hey, ha, guy, 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 hey, guy, hey, guy, hey, guy. So I also thought like Billy Eckstein, why waste my time in this goddamn school? I'm going to quit and go play my drums like Billy Eckstein quit to go and sing. And that's the truth. So I left, uh, I left college before I could finish with it. And I was bored stiff with the college regimen. You know, it was like uh, an army camp. And I, I can only take that for as long as I could take it. Then I, I got out. Ago Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo, this is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My funeral day is of the Akan people. It was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. Yeah. People call me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many things. Talking about your dad, uh, Kofi Ganaba, memories back, how would you describe him? Well, when I grew up from school, my father was not here, he was in the States. And I went to a Jamestown Government Boys School. And when my father came back, I realized that I had a father who was a big time musician, so I, I, I didn't even realize it. So he got me into music and he taught me how to play the drums. And I was rehearsing with him, we played with police band and other um, groups, Uru dance band, you know, we were moving around, I was supporting him. And I was nicknamed the Little Thunder. So basically, me and my father, on the music level, we've been very good partners. I love him 100% for his music. He has done a lot of things for the world of music. Not only for Ghana, not only for Africa, for the world. I am more than a musician, and that makes me different. But musically, I love my father. He has inspired me to love music. And I believe that I can continue. And if the chance is given properly, I can do my best. Not Maybe not to be like my father, but be almost like him, musically. So this is the way I remember my father. On musical level, political, Journalism, it was very good. You know, constructive criticisms of everything. Whether you are part of him or you are against him, he tells his mind and that's about it. You see? So I think we've lost a great guy for the whole world, not only Ghana. Go Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo. This is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My funeral day is of the Akan people, it was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. Yeah. People called me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. I remember when we were growing up, he always allowed us to do whatever we wanted to do when we were growing up as kids, me and my sister. Even when my mom didn't like it, he'll go he'll go like go ahead and do whatever you want to do, just have fun. Um, when I was growing up, I worked for him. 
as um, his personal secretary. And um, I used to travel with him. Those were very nice days. We used to travel together. And um, I used to organize shows for him. And um, apart from that, I, I don't know, taking care of him, I have so many found, I have so many beautiful memories, you know, taking care of him, cooking for him, we talking, we used to talk a lot, you know, I always told him my problems and he always tell me something to make me feel good. You know, it was very good. It was very, it was a blessing to have known a man like my dad and to have lived with him, you know, because he was, you know, he grew very, he, he was an old man. And so he was um, very wise. It was very nice to have had a man of his status around me. He always helped me, not in terms of, you know, financial wise or anything, but um, emotionally and morally and everything. He was very supportive. He's always been supportive. I know he's still with me. I just can't see him, but I know he's still with me. And maybe when I talk to him, I know when I talk to him, he hears, you know, and... Um, I will, I will miss him a lot. Garaba is a unique personality in the field. Number one, <clears throat> I stopped using American jazz drums and started using African pentatonic drums because the African pentatonic drum sounds was what they took to America. The slaves took to America. But the sounds would frighten the white man, the white massa. And so he, he forced them to stop it and use his English bass drum and snare drum and all that, you know? <clears throat> and then to play music the way the white man wanted it to be played. The, the Africans would play music the African way and the white man would say, no, don't do it like that, do it like this. Do it the, the white man's way. And this was what was happening until I came out of Africa, you know, like uh, an Osage for into the jazz world to deliver people from this bondage and to, to establish and affirm and emphasize the, the African presence in, in jazz music. Nobody has done it before. No, no, nobody has ever done it before. I mean, you do the research and find out if I'm lying or telling the truth. And this, Ghanaians don't know. If Ghanaians knew this, they'd be very proud of it. That if, if, we were, if it was a world heavyweight champion, and America would, would say they have the world heavyweight champion, if, it's, if it talk, when you talk about drums, Solo drumming, uh, Ghana by the man. Briefly, how would you like to describe Kofi Ghana by the divine drama? Well, he's a musician, he's a collector, he's an archivist, he's a broadcaster, he's a man of many, many parts. I work in, with him in various capacities. I helped to organize his library. I organized a lot of concerts. That was his, an activist, you know, for him. Well, being his activist and his aide, what are some of the things you really remember about Kofi Ganaba? Go on stage with him. That's an experience I will never forget. I mean, going with, on stage with Ghana, but I can't describe it. It's an experience, you know. <laughs> I, I can't describe it, but... who? Bang! A firecracker will go off. 
Then we climb on stage and do our thing. I was a mime actor and he'll be running a commentary on the things I'm doing on stage. Something else, something else. I mean, <laughs> I can't describe it. It's an experience. Now, being his aide, what will you really describe are things that really or uh, easily get him angry? Dumbness. If you are dumb, if you, if you don't think smart, if you don't think fast, it irritates him. Or when in his quiet moments, before he goes on stage, you want to come and talk to him about irrelevant things. Very, very irritating for him. For me, he's the greatest drama the world has seen. And I'm saying this because he plays different kinds of drums and different kinds of rhythms. He can play the jazz kit very, very competently. But then he plays African drums even better. And when you come to African drums and rhythms, he doesn't stick to Ghana. He plays from Ethiopia, Benin, Cameroon, Burundi, Urundi. Various, various rhythms from various African countries competently. And in Ghana too, he plays Ghana rhythms, Ashanti rhythms, Northern rhythms very, very well. I mean, you can't find a drummer anywhere in the world who can handle so many rhythms so competently. He's the greatest drummer this world has seen. The most memorable performance would be the last performance of Ya Asantewa, Warrior Queen, at the National Theatre, Accra, Ghana. That, that night was something else. It was something else because the play had started to accept and use many of the ideas which I had pumped into it and the ideas which had been rejected and scorned at and laughed at, they, they got around somehow to incorporate these ideas. And that night, the show jailed. I have never forgotten it. It's, it's, it's my best night in my music world. <laughs> Can you briefly describe your dad working with him technically? Well, when he playing with my father, my father is a type of musician that you cannot take chances with him. You have to be focused when you are playing with him. You should know what you are playing because he can stop you on stage and tell you that, get out of here, what the, what the hell are you playing? So you have to be alert and, and, and rehearse and be perfect because the man was a, just a right on time, a perfection person. So. There's no way you can just go and jam with him and try to do anything by heart, you know? So me working with him, I've had a lot of experiences with him, not from now, for 40 years, if you're working with for, for somebody all your life, especially your father, I mean, <laughs> you're bound to learn something. Yeah. So we can identify ourselves properly. If he hits a note, I know where it's coming from. If my father plays, 
I know me, my respond, call and respond. I know what to play. So we've been doing these things for years. And this is the uh, uh, the climax of that things that we've been doing in this show on this bomb diggy recording. So I'm, I'm always cool with him. I like to play with him. I enjoy playing with him because he enjoys playing with me too because we understand each other. It's only few people that I can really play with them and enjoy myself. Okay. And my father too, I believe only it's only few people in Ghana here that you can really play because they haven't bothered to study his music. They have music in the archives that all musicians should go and look for it and try to develop on what he has put down. So many compositions that not only me I'm supposed to uh, continue, but anybody, senior can continue, anybody can continue, Ben, Jerry, Telfer, any, any group, all the groups can be able, but they don't bother to go and study. So we have to change that trend and give praises where praises due, yeah. and then help the people to develop the music so that we can have more Ghana bass. So now on the flip side, can you remember some of the arrangements you play and give us some a cappella of it, just in memory of your dad? that is my father's I kept along with me. <laughs> <laughs> On this note, folks, you are still watching Living Legends in memory of Kofi Ganaba, the divine drama, and his son, uh, Glenn Kofi Ga would I be out of COVID? Aha! This is Ghana Baba, <laughs> or for short, Ghana Baba number two. <laughs> well, on the program, and it's so exciting. At the same time, it's so we are so sad and we are so happy. I don't know. This tells you that Kofi Ghana Baba has really carved something that is so monumental that we can't just forget it. He's a true legend and he will continue to live with us. Keep watching the program, Living Legends. <laughs> Viewers, you are all welcome to a wonderful edition of the program Living Legends in memory of the divine drama Kofi Ganaba. I was christened Warren Gamaliel Akwei. My father's family bore the name Akwei. So it was Warren Gamaliel Akwei. The Warren Gamaliel came from uh, America's president, Warren Gamaliel Harding, who died in 1923, the year I was born. Warren Gamaliel Harding, and I was named Warren Gamaliel Akwey. So, when the American fever caught me, and my friends in the Gold Coast, because the GIs were here, and we all wanted to go to America. I shortened the Gamilia to Guy. And instead of Warren Gamilia, I made it Guy Warren. And that's what happened. So it was Gamilia shortened to Guy, because I wanted to Yankee my name. What is interesting about Kofi Ganaba is how he developed and got to the point where he became an international figure. Because you know, he was in, uh, in the US and uh, he was going to play his own music and join, you know, people were playing jazz and so forth. But he went also with the idea that his own music was important and he wanted to find ways of blending, you know, what was going on with his. This was also a time when we were conscious of our own identity and his consciousness of his African identity so strong, uh, was so strong that you know it pervaded everything that he did and if you look at his evolution this is the thing that held him 
you know, and help him to assert himself. Uh, in many ways, you know, he was uh, extraordinary, uh, not only in terms of the combination that he used, but also in terms of the energy and uh, so forth that uh, he showed, and how he was able to show the power of drums, you know, through polyrhythms and all sorts of things that he, that he was able to display. So musically, he was very important. I had very great respect for him and for his way of thinking about how to move his own tradition forward. Time was when people perceived me as a freak, which I was. I was a freak, man. I, I did things which, which didn't tally with the ordinary. I was a freak. But now, uh, I'm no longer, I, 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 I'm not classified as a freak. I'm, I'm just classified as, <laughs> this will make you laugh, someone who is very hard to know or to come close. How do you perceive your father? Well, my daddy liked to be by himself. But sometimes there's contradiction is his lifestyle. He's an entertainer. In other words, you deal with people. You go and entertain people. But at the end of the entertainment, he wants to be isolated and be by himself. He doesn't want to know about anybody coming. You have to be uh, and have a, uh, appointments. You know, like he starts to stay away from people. But at the same time, he likes to entertain people. So he's not really a high hard person. It's, it's, it's just that he wants to do his own thing. When he decides to do something, nobody's going to change him, his mind. And so people might claim that he's a hard person. But when you get to him, he's very jovial, he's entertainer. So I don't see how he will be hard on people. You know what I mean? Maybe he'll be hard to the people that are close to him, but not to the masses. Yeah. He loves people. Some people think he's a crazy man. I mean, people have told him that, oh, don't follow that mad man. A lot of people think he's not serious. But now, we will see who is not serious. Whether it's the world which is not serious, or he is the one who is not serious. Ganaba knew where he was going, and he doesn't care what the world thought about him. He has a mission, and he knows. He's very much aware of himself. He knows himself thoroughly. So he doesn't mind what he, people say. You know, there's this Buddhist saying which guides him a lot, that if a traveler does not meet his equal or is better on the path, it's better he keeps to his solitary path because there's no companionship in the fool. Go Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Konimo, this is an order, it is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages, so my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My funeral day is of the Akan people. It was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. Yeah. People call me all sorts of names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. Ghana loves silence. He loves to meditate. He loves to, above everything else, Aside from my music, I love to read. I, I, I read, uh, not voraciously, but when I read a book, I've read it. When did you really caught up with your daddy musically? Well, I started playing with my father at the age of nine. And, and I was in the primary school at that time. 
So we've been playing together and sharing so many ideas. I've been following him, watching him. We've been to secondary schools all over Ghana to perform. We've done to the armed forces. We played for the police orchestra and all those kind of things. So I grew up with him uh, on that level. So musically, uh, it has been a long time. But unfortunately, uh, we're not able to come together for the world to hear is that, oh, Ghana had a son who was a dynamite drum player. You can ask people from Addis Ababa, they will tell you. you. Can even ask all the guys that are when, in my age group at that time, whether it's in Achimota or wherever, they will tell you. And I didn't capitalize on my talent. So we were like Tom and Jerry. We did that, 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 that until I decided to go to the States and left my daddy, you know. But then we've been coming back to team up. At the end of his time, that's when we really started doing something. Just like this album we just did, the last recorded album of my father, you know. So this is the story. <laughs> Even though he concentrated on his African things, he was versatile. As I've mentioned, he has recordings of even Western music and so forth. But he knew how to use these. He knew how to fit into the new world. And this is why Ganaba has made such an impact. People, in fact, people wonder about the, how he arrived at the position he, he took and the kind of skills and so forth he developed. So that is why I'm interested in uh, Kofi, uh, he used to be called Kofi Ganaba. I'm interested in uh, memorializing him through an award or prize, an award you know, uh, scheme so that we keep his memory alive. When he was alive, he was a living legend. Now we want him to continue to be a legend. Ago Ghana! Afro TV presents Living Legend. Olimo, this is an order. It is not a request. Yeah. I can speak so many languages. So my patients feel comfortable with me. Ghana Bar is a combination of many, 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 many. My funeral day is of the Akan people. It was my first book. I went to London to help to turn our Gold Coast office. Then it was into a high commission. I got this sucker, not from Ghana, but from Philadelphia. People call me also some names as a result of my sporting life. I was a little adventurous. So on Monday, when I saw the papers, I decided to quit football for good. Living Legends was brought to you by Afro TV. You can be, one can be heavyweight or lightweight. Uh, both are acceptable. I wouldn't say that. The man who plays Stravinsky is more enlightened than the man who plays uh, Ashiko music or uh, Mahafali music. But the thing is, I am concerned with the lifestyle which goes with the musicians. Uh, this myth that the musician uh, 
loves women, he drinks and loves a good time and let's roll, let it roll and burn burn the fuses, that type of thing. That 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 image is bad. That's why many parents don't want their their children to be musicians. So uh, the, to me, the lifestyle of the individual musician is the important thing. You know, people will take you cheap if you play cheap. And, uh, they will take you serious if you are serious. If that myth can be broken, <coughs> if that myth can be broken or changed or or Corrected. Corrected is the thing. We don't have a system in Ghana which would do this correctly cultural decadence and, 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 and uh, retrieve us from the abyss into which our culture is sinking every day. Um, he, he's one of the pioneers who fought for, for, for us to be able to have, you know, the leeway, you know, of going to America and uh, interact with these musicians. And Kofi Ganaba, you know, with his drums and everything, you know, he was also, you know, every time trying to play the African thing. You know, he was in London too, you know, and he has a way of uh, enticing his audience and things like that. You know, and he'll be speaking Ga, you know, in your film or you know, he has some language that we speak. They didn't understand what he was saying, but all of them would say, Yeah. It was part of the music. It was part of it. <laughs> you know, but we know what he was saying. Yeah. And maybe what he was saying wasn't right, you know. <laughs> but they didn't understand it. So yeah, they accepted. I said, Yeah, man. You know, and he got away with so many things, right. you know, because he was always himself and never wanted to be anybody until he even changed his name to Kofi Ganaba because initially he was called Guy Warren. Oh, yeah. You know, we all, when we were, you know, growing up, Americanized, you know, uh, things were, you know, straight into our minds. I mean, all of us were, you know, even using American names and all that. Yeah. <laughs> but when you get to a certain point, you say, no, man, there's got to be a turnaround. And Kofi Ganaba did it. With this Guy Warren, he changed it to Kofi Ganaba because he said he's a son of Ghana. You know, born on Friday, so <laughs> it's Kofi Ganaba, and that was fantastic. catch on and spread. So my legacy, not necessarily to America, but to the world, is my album, Africa Speaks, America Answers. When I was making that album, I had this thought in mind that if I made the album and stepped out of the studio into the street and got knocked down by a car, I would have done what I came into the world to do. So the album was very well spaced. All the numbers were played differently and all the numbers were, were uh, uh, little gems by themselves. Africa Speaks America Answers. That is my legacy to the world. Until same time next week, we'll be coming your way with another edition of the program Living Legends in memory. I mean, words cannot describe Kofi Ganaba. Therefore, this program will still remain in his memory. Make edit with our same time, same place next week.
Afro TV, redefining Africa's heritage.